Hey there, everybody. It's been a, a really long time since I did one of these. I think probably about a year. Sorry about that, but you know, life gets busy sometimes. Uh, so I kind of took a few months off still, uh, maybe about six months, I guess. And in the interim, uh, the creators released another point release, 1.1.1, uh, I believe. Let's see. Uh, yeah, 111. And they added a few things, took away a few things. I can't remember all the stuff they got changed. And I, I think I was in the middle of a character on 1.1.0 when I ran out of time uh, the last time around. Uh, so you would have seen if you watched those videos, they added like some cool boss monsters, like some Balrogs and stuff. In this version, I can't remember all the tweaks that were made. There were some good ones, some bug fixes, but uh, there was also a melee ability change where they took away stun, which you usually put on characters that use like really heavy weapons. And they added this other ability called momentum, uh, sort of in its place, but it does something very different. Uh, and they also unified some of the, uh, the way weapon weights work, but we can talk about this a bit later. Uh, what I did want to do is I was on a plane trip a little while ago and I, I allowed myself a few games. <clears throat> and there was a certain character build that I used over and over again, which I like to call the beefcake build, um, where you take four strength and then threes and everything else with a, a Fionor. And this will also show something which I don't think I've shown yet. Um, called the artistry start that a lot of people on the forums use. I think the first time I saw it was uh, one of the forum guys, Hallucination Mushroom, uh, had a video where he showed how he got through like the first 600 feet of the game pretty much without fail, uh, without having to think much. So this is the, the distribution. You take four melee points, four evasion, and then six in smithing. Uh, save that 900 points, you need that. And then we're off to the races. Okay, so what I like to do right now is take my smithing ability so I don't forget. Um, so what you want to do is take armor smith and artistry. And our goal right now is to get to the first forge. This is a pretty sticky time. Um, the first couple of floors can be tricky, but not that bad. Uh, what you really hope, <clears throat> one of the advantages that this build has in the early game is that you have four strength. And if you remember how the rules work, uh, for every pound of weapon weight, you'll get an extra damage side for every point of strength you have. So if I have a four pound sword and I have four strength, I'll get four extra damage sides, which is a lot. This sword, unfortunately, is only 3.7 pounds, so I'm missing the damage side. Um, but the good thing about the early game is that there are curved swords pretty much everywhere. And I'm pretty sure their ideal weight, so the the weight which they get averaged around is four pounds. So you'll, you'll often find one that's exactly four pounds, which is good because you want the optimal weapon weight for your strength because it allows you to get more criticals. See, this one's 4.1, so that's better than this one. Let's go with that. So we're just going to try and buzz through the, the first couple of floors. Uh, the only thing that can really happen to you badly here is that uh, you'll get surrounded like this. But you hit so hard that it's not really a huge deal. And I'm going to kill this worm because that's the other bad thing that can happen to you is you can get swarmed by worms. And sometimes orc soldiers show up like on the 50 foot floor where we are now, but it's fairly uncommon. I usually like to clear the 50 foot floor. I don't know why, it's probably inefficient, but sometimes you find good stuff and I don't like knowing that I missed out on it. Especially if you can find like a leather armor or something, because usually the forge that you find on 100 feet has some nasty monsters in it. Um, I just took a melee point there. So basically the idea of this build is to get to the first forge, make some cool stuff, which I'll show you in a sec, and then uh, just keep boosting melee and evasion until they get to around 10. And then we go from there. Let's go down the stairs. Was that a scout or a... Yeah, it was a scout. Potion, great. Cloak. Any equipment you can find at this stage is, is helpful. Uh, it's also good if you find like a puny weapon that you don't think you'll ever use. Uh, this short sword is, is crap for this character, but it does have one extra melee compared to our curved sword. And when you're trying to hit things like these bats, if you're having a hard time, you can just switch over to it. Uh, until you have a bow. Okay, whenever you walk into a dark room in the on this 100 foot floor, there's a very high chance that it's probably a forge. 
And that means there's a very high chance that there's probably some nasty monsters in here. So what I like to do is take one step in. Oh, okay. Usually they're bigger than this. And then I take a few steps out to see if anything chases me out. But this is actually very lucky. Oh, wow. And we get a corselet of protection here, too. Um, I'm going to hang on to that corselet. I don't want to use it because it's it's got a huge evasion and a huge, well, not a huge, but an attack uh, penalty. But it's good to have for two reasons. One is that we just got 100 experience for identifying it. But the other is that once archers show up, um, you get a huge evasion penalty, 50% to, uh, to arrows. So you might as well use protection to save you from them rather than evasion if you can. So sometimes I keep the course load around just to switch to it when archers start shooting at me. Um, and the good thing about this character with four strength is that I can carry like a whack of stuff. Where's my, yeah, I can carry 200 pounds worth of crap. Um, whereas my normal, I usually use around two strength and it's, it's much less than that. So I saw these orcs over there. Uh, I'm going to kill them before I start forging because even if I was to ignore them, uh, they would probably hear me start and then I'd be in trouble. So I'd rather deal with them now. Also these worms. Stuff. Potion. All right. So <clears throat> what the artist restart lets you do is make a whole bunch of cheap armor that gives you a huge evasion bonus, uh, which means that most of the monsters on the first, you know, like 500 feet are going to have a really hard time hitting you, which makes the first half of the game really easy. What that means for this character, though, is that there's a really tricky transition point around 600 feet, and I found some ways of mitigating it, but I'm not a very good player, and I usually start to get excited around 600 feet because that's where all the fun stuff happens. Um, so I, I've killed dozens of characters around six or 700 feet. Um, but we'll worry about that when we get there. What this does let you do, though, is that I find a lot of new players to the game are saying stuff like, I keep dying on 150 feet, which does kind of get boring, I'm going to admit. Um, and it seems when you first start playing that it's almost impossible to get past like all the orc packs, like how do I survive this? There are so many of them. And until you learn how their AI works, this can kind of mitigate a lot of the brain power you have to put into it. So the first thing I like to make are um, an armor, a shield, and a helmet. And it sort of depends on what I found to this point. Like, if I found an amazing helmet, I probably wouldn't make the helmet first. Um, but in this case, I haven't really found a heck of a lot of interesting stuff yet. So, well, why am I increasing the weight? I just like to decrease the weight to as low as possible to. Um, well, I guess I used to play a lot of stealth characters, and you want as little armor weight as possible when you're a stealth character, because uh, it for every 10 pounds of armor weight or something, you get a stealth penalty. But I think for this character, it's not such a big deal, because I don't really do much with stealth. OK, so now I'm going to make a helmet. So a normal helmet is minus 1 evasion 1d2. But here I'm going to negate the evasion penalty and add a protection side. I have a helmet. And what do I want now? Um, so there are two things you can take here. If you found a really good two-handed weapon, the shield is kind of not worth it, but you can take, uh, say, a, a good pair of boots. All in all, there's six pieces of armor we want to make. We want to make armor, like uh, soft armor, a cloak, um, a shield, a helmet, some gloves, some boots. Well, that's actually maybe seven. And then in an ideal situation, at some point, you'll make a, a dwarf mask. Not because you're going to wear it all the time, but as a swap for when uh, fire-breathing monsters show up. So let's, where was I? What have I made so far? The armor. Let's make a helmet. No, I made that already. It's the shield. And a lot of these are kind of, you know, it's, it's up to you to pick what you want. If you want to make a really high quality studded leather instead of a normal leather. You'll have a bit more protection and a bit less evasion. Uh, the kite shield. So you could make, you know, a kite shield with less of an attack penalty. That's probably about it though. So yeah, it's, it's kind of up to you. I like to go for as much evasion as I can. And usually in the early game, 
all the equipment you find on the floor, you know, it's minus one evasion here, minus one evasion there, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but pretty soon you're down to like five evasion and we're at 10. And that's a huge difference in the first few floors. And it's gonna get even bigger when we find our next forge. Um, one of the cool things they added in 111 uh, was that there was a sort of uh, little mini saves coming game you might play sometimes where, or more like a restart game, where you create a character, you'd get down to 100 feet, and your forge would have two uses, and you'd be like, oh crap, I'm just going to start over because I wanted at least three uses out of this forge. And then sometimes it would have four uses, and you'd be excited you have a good character. So they've decided to make this specific forge kind of... Uh, more fair in the sense that it always has three uses. So the first forge you meet always has three uses, um, which I like a lot. So now we're just gonna, our basically our interim goal now with this character is to A, survive, because uh, one of the things about this guy is most, most elf builds that you'll use, that you'll see used often, will have a bit more co uh, constitution than this. You'll start with at least 41 HP. Not all of them, but quite a few. Uh, especially the melee heavy ones. This guy is a bit fragile if he gets into trouble, but the trade-off is that you hit, provided you can find the right weapons, you can hit really hard, so you should kill things faster. So that's that's the plan anyways. So right now we just want to build up as much experience as we can on these first floors because they're easy for us. Uh, hopefully find some decent stuff. Um, but what we really want to do is find a second forge. And then... Uh, build up our, our best kind of armor kit that we can make. Man, this is a moldy place. Yeah, and then from there we can go pick up some abilities that are going to help this character a lot. Um, the other thing that happened, I can't remember if this happened in 111 or 110. Uh, was that the forge distribution has been kind of smoothed out now. So before forges, I think, would just kind of like randomly show up just like a vault. So there was some probability that you would find one. And it was much higher in the deeper floors than in the, the shallower floors. Now there's sort of a, a more linear progression, like the game counts how many forges you've seen and tries to give you one every few floors or something. I don't really fully understand it, but uh, the gist of it is that you won't find... A, a normal character won't find, like, 13 forges in the bottom two floors and make, like, crazy stuff. They'll, they'll find more forges early on. Um, so it helps you a bit more through the early game and sort of prevents you from making crazy overpowered smithing characters in the late game, which, I mean, is kind of sad because those were cool, but you can still do it. I just don't have the patience for it anywhere. I think uh, we have one winner in this video series who was a, a stealth archer, but that one relied very heavily on tweet, like basically gaming the, the smithing system. So in the early game... <clears throat> what you you really want to find in terms of weapons is like all these short swords and long swords I just kind of pick them up in case you know I decide I want to use them but uh, this this four pound curve sword is pretty good for this guy um, but you really want at least one heavy weapon so a heavy weapon is something that has like three damage dice or more that's how I would classify it uh, so a battle axe is usually the first one you'll find because if you wield that two handed uh, you'll get 3d10 and there's some monsters in the early game that just have a lot of protection, and you can't even really hurt them uh, unless you can hit them that hard. I hate it when they run like that. Okay. Normally, if there aren't many monsters around, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to get swarmed, I will go hand-to-hand -hand with these molds. These ones make you confused, just for the experience, but because I should be able to kill it. Like, And what I should have done was use my axe. But it is dangerous, because if you get a few bad turns, or something else shows up while you're confused, uh, you'll you'll lose, because your constitution is horrible. Or at least horrible for an elf. Where is... So you see when I take off my shield, my to hit is pretty bad, but 3d10 is not anything to be sneezed at. There we go. So kind of a lot of work for a 3d experience, but... That's life in Eggmand. Okay. And this is like my favorite dude to meet in the early game. I don't know if you saw that green orc, but that's Gorgal. This build, as soon as you get to the first forge, 
Like, the odds of you getting killed by this guy are so minimal, even if you just stand here and take swings at everything. Okay, and I hope now, when you get to a certain HP level, you'll see this, I think, has to be aggressive. Oh, no, he's doing it. So at some point, instead of just standing outside the, the hallway like that and letting his buddies gang up on you, this, this works for orcs in general. Once you get to a certain state, like if you've been injured or you're slow or you're confused, they'll chase you into the halls, which is great, because now you can fight them one-on-one. -on -one. He's actually doing a good job. Alright, down he goes. Now his buddies fly away. Oh, and this is definitely a Gondolin longsword, which is amazing. Uh, Gondolin longswords kill or slay orcs and trolls. Although my guy has such low perception right now that I'll probably kill a million trolls before he realizes what he has. But the other reason it's good is that when there are orcs around, which is like pretty much always, uh, the sword will glow. Ah! I hate these things. Alright, so this is where I'm going to switch to my uh, heavy duty armor here. And they should have a hard time hurting me. I, however, do not have much of a hard time hurting them. That's that. Switch back to my armor. Alright. So, I'm not wearing gloves yet. So one might think, like, well, I should just wear these. But I'm really wary of melee penalties in the early game. And gauntlets reduce your melee penalty by one, or release that, reduce your melee by one unless you find like a, a special pair. So I just don't bother. Ah. I'm gonna switch back to my real sword for this thing. Yeah, so now we just slowly build up melee and evasion. So I think a lot of players would dive at this point. Um, which, I mean, for all I know, that's the right way to play the game, but... I generally find that if I trawl around the first few floors, I can at least find enough unidentified items that I know, like, I can... I'm good enough at playing the identif identification game that I can identify those ones uh, and pick up some experience and, and do a bit better past 500 feet. So I don't need my vanilla longsword anymore. This orc scout is driving me bonkers. Uh, I usually keep daggers in the early game if I don't have a bow yet. Just to be able to lob at enemies that are trying to run away. Like 90% of the time I won't be able to kill them that way, but it's better than nothing. And I'm going to inscribe this longsword so I can switch to it easy. Sometimes these Gondolin weapons are more trouble than they're worth because you'll hit the the bad guy and you'll hurt him quite a bit and then he just runs because the when you have a slay on a weapon they tend to flee. I think that's just a result of the extra light, but I'm not sure. Uh, orcs are scared of light, so the more that you have, the more of a morale penalty they'll get, and so they'll flee sooner than normal. The other great thing about having a high-strength character is you can bust through pretty much everything, uh, including webs, which for many early, or sorry, for many first-time players, I guess, the getting caught in a web is sort of terrifying because you don't, especially if you don't understand what check is being made to get you out of the web because you have the spider in front of you that's just biting you while you're trying to puzzle out how to get out of there. Um, so, in case you didn't know, that is a strength check. Which is interesting because most checks in the game, like most things that are... Oh. So here I thought I'd found a shadow mold or something, which is possible, but my torch is also right about to run out. So I imagine it's just my torch is burning out. Yeah. And shadow molds, uh, they, they cast 
darkness, obviously. But they also hit, like, trucks. And there was supposed to be some kind of resistance afforded for how much light you have, but I think there's a bug that prevents that from happening, so they pretty much always hit with the same strength. Um, and for a character with this little HP, they can kill you in two hits. So if you don't know where they are, and you take two wrong steps, then you're dead. So You guys are so annoying. So this, these archers used to be death to me until I figured out a bit about how they move. Mostly thanks to Clouded on the, on the forums, who is very patient with explaining me how this works. But the way I kind of see it now is you're trying to pin them against the wall. Um, there's a certain kind of movement pattern they have. There's a very easy way to trick them when they're coming out of a hallway. But aside from that, there's still a lot of things you can do to, to keep them from running out of doors and stuff. So uh, the faster you can kill them, the better. Because the thing with those guys is that even though I have like high protection when I put on my male corselet and their arrows can't hurt me too, too much, um, the difficulty remains is that you have a 50% evasion penalty. And my evasion is not crazy awesome yet. So eventually they're going to hit you for a critical. And eventually that critical is going to fall on the wrong side of your survival zone. So you really just want to kill them as fast as possible. Plus they're super annoying. So usually at this stage in the game, I just eat everything. Uh, what was that? Ah, I ate what was in my inventory. Now I'm an idiot. Um, all right, so I'll, I'll wait until I'm not full. And this is kind of annoying. So there's a secret door here almost like certainly. So I could take a bit more perception to try and find it, but I'm just going to reboot the level. So there are penalties to doing that. So usually this would be death to an early character if a Gorkrow blinds you. But we have enough armor that we've made that he can't really hurt you even if you're blind. Um, what was I saying? Uh, when you flee a level, I mean, in the early stages, it's really not that big a deal, but I think the, the biggest problem that can happen is that any artifacts that get generated on that level, even if you didn't find them, will never show up again in the game. So, like, there's an extremely small probability that, you know, I generated Ringel there on that floor, and then I left, and I'll never find it. But, I mean, you, it's the same risk when you're diving, because you're skipping so many floors, so. And for all I know, I'm wrong about that, but I, I that's how I understood it to work, which is different than normal Angband. Uh, I think in normal Angband, if you find, sorry, if you're on a floor and you generate an artifact, but you'd never see it, uh, you can still find it later. Where's my spears? Yeah, you see these daggers kind of just like bounce off the orc. Oh, right, I forgot to wear my corslet. Man, there's a lot of these things. gonna go in here and shut the door. So the good thing about, this is the thing, I was kind of playing sloppy there, I was getting annoyed. Um, if you are in a room where you know there's an out, where you can close the door, and there are archers outside, you're still pretty safe, because you can just take a nap here, and unless, I was gonna say, unless there's a soldier who's gonna come find you, you can just shut the door. Oh, now he broke the door, I think. Or he just keeps opening it. Okay, but generally, if it's just a room of only archers, you're still in the clear, because they won't come open the door. Uh, I don't know, they're scared of you or something. And the good thing is if there's an orc who comes and opens the door anyways and chases you in, they can't shoot you still, so... Now I'm gonna close this door. Take a nap. Let's go back. Okay, so now that I have this situation, if you know there are, or I think I've shown this before, but if you know there are archers here, you can open this door. Okay, they see you, whatever. They're gonna start shooting at you now. So now what I can do is this little trick where I kind of shimmy down here, wait a few turns, now move into the corner, and now you'll see he came out into the room. Now this is a bit tricky because there's this door here, so I think he's going to gun for it, but now I can move up, and he's just going to stand there like a tool, and I'm going to splat him against the wall. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the remainder. However, I might... Oops, I'm hitting pass. What am I doing? Let's 
skin. Is there any more? No, I think that's all of them. I'm just gonna go back and get my Where did I put my spear? Oh, I've got it. Okay, that's that. A special great spear. Great spears are usually just crap, but um, I'm gonna hang on to that one because it's got a an ego on it. And at the very least I can identify it at some point. If I see a wolf and it starts glowing. Which it did. <laughs> no, I'm not unusual into this just happens a lot. So this is a Doriath spear probably, and I will hopefully ID this in short order. Crappy helmet, more orcs. It is, yeah. See, I almost want to not use the Gondolin sword sometimes because I, I would rather just kill them so that they don't come back later. But. So this centipede is a case where I'd want to use my heavy weapon. I didn't explain something before, but uh, when I found this great sword, I ditched my battle axe because I never use battle axes one-handed with, with elves. Uh, and the greatsword is kind of better in every way. It's, it's got a little bit less, one less damage side when I wield it two-handed than the battle axe would, but um, I get two extra points to hit with it, so I'm actually going to hit things with it. Let's just splat this orc. Another spear. All right. I guess this is one of those cases where I'm way off on one side of the level and there's a staircase between me and the unexplored part and I'm sort of wondering like is it worth it to go see what's over there but why not I'm doing okay for time I'm not doing great for time let's see if I can figure out that this spear is what it is nope it's the problem with having low perception you guys are real dumb Warhammers are really awesome for this style of character, uh, but you really want the 41 Warhammers, the vanilla ones, are sort of useless. Uh, but as soon as you get to like a 42, it's it's crazy, crazy strong because you can wield them one-handed and get like 46 or something, which is okay. And then if you switch to two-handed, it's anything above like 47 is is pretty wild. Oops. All right, let's do one more floor, and then we'll, we'll call it for now. Yellow herb. Let's go back to the Storyath spear. You really want to kill those sword spiders in a hurry. Uh, firstly, because they hit you really hard. But secondly, just because they run. They're fast monsters, so when they run, they run away really fast, and it's obnoxious. So That's a good set of gauntlets, but it still has the melee penalty. Over here is a Shadow Mold. Um, I will never ever fight a Shadow Mold. Like, usually if it's alone in a corner somewhere where I know there's nobody coming, I'll try to figure out where it is and kill it with a heavy weapon in like one shot or something. But I won't fight them near stairs because like invariably you'll take one hit, you'll be down at like 10 HP and then like 10 orcs come up the stairs or something. All right, let's go back to my normal weaponry. I'm gonna give this round shield an LS2. And of course, let's gray potion. Man, I turned into an apothecary here. Let's and I should have paid attention to which potions I found when. I think I found green and crimson first. Ouch. Yeah, orc warriors can hit really. Oh, I'm still wearing my stupid male corslet. But yeah, they do hit hard, and I could technically die in one hit here, so. Got him. 
I'll let that other one go do whatever he wants with his life. <clears throat> These spy type characters, you really want to kill them quickly, just because they make so much noise. Oh my god, this is the worst spy ever. The reason why that's the worst spy ever is he just woke up a worm. Um, and those acid worms are a pain. I was actually lucky, one of them hit me. But I didn't uh, have my armor damaged. So let's play this game again. Actually, whoa. Yeah, there's a lot of bad guys here. Oh, that was a good. See, the the good thing about throwing weapons is they they rarely hit, but when they hit, it's not it's like it's serious. And now we've got some throwing axes, which are great. Yeah, sure, show it all you want. Okay. So let's see if I can convince these things to leave me alone. Close him, so I'm gonna kinda screw it around the side of the room to make them feel safe. Alright, I'll drink some liqueur. The murky brown potions are Liquor potions. I guess I'll switch back to my male corslet too, which I should have done in the first place. Oh, they're, they're really reamy. Me. If I die to an Easterling spy, that's going to be awesome. It has happened. This is hilarious. Okay, that's that one. The Easterling Spy has a bow, and it does, I think it's like the exact same as the Orc Archer, so don't... It doesn't shoot very often, but it can still kill you, so... And it's really embarrassing when that happens. I swear to God, I've never had a spy. Oh, it's because I can't get through. Right, I'm just gonna leave it. He can come get me whenever he wants. Come on. Actually, I'm gonna hit him in the face with a greatsword. That'll make me feel good. There we go. Okay. Let's go back to my normal kit. Now that I have throwing axes, I will never use daggers again, so... That took a lot longer than I wanted, but it's over now. Let me switch back to my light armor. Bing. Whenever you see one of these H's, that's a a mulep, they can make you forget the whole level. So just take a peek at the map and remember where the stairs are that you want to go next. So I know that I have to go to the top left to get to those downstairs. So that if he has this, this bell he can ring and then your map disappears. Which, I mean, it's kind of neat, but it's, I don't know, it's pretty obnoxious when you map the whole level and you just want to leave. I could switch to a lighter weapon to hit this thing, but... This is where it's really handy to have a bow and arrows, but I still haven't found a bow. I still get pretty good experience for killing these things. That's uh, not worth it. Make sure when there are worms that you've left behind, uh, that you close all the doors that you can. That way you can kind of quarantine in there. Eventually a monster is going to walk through like this guy and open the doors again, but at least you've done your best. Alright, so I'm going to take one more point of melee. Um, we still haven't found another forge, which is kind of a bummer, but it's, it's pretty common to find it around 350 or 400, so it might take us a while. We have been lucky in the sense that 
a lot of the floors that we generated have been quite small. Sometimes I get to like 250 feet and I'm just on this massive map and I somehow feel compelled to explore the whole thing, but I think that's a good stop point for now. So uh, we'll continue on with this character hopefully sometime soon. I don't know. We'll see. But I'll see you next time.